Hey, John here from John Stewart Yourself. For those of you who already own a CNC machine and have ever thought about getting a laser, um, I just learned that you could actually attach a laser to your CNC machine. So I started looking online and I saw that JTEC just came out with a 14 watt laser. Now I purchased this laser by myself. They didn't ship it to me for free or anything. So everything I tell you about this laser is gonna be unbiased. Um, so, and then on the long run, I learned about Air Assist. So the second video, of this will be actually installing the air assist portion of this but we're going to go ahead and attach this to a cnc and show you how easy it is and we're going to start cutting with it right away so let's get cutting so the laser arrived nicely packaged the controller and the laser itself was wrapped in bubble wrap First, I took all the components out of the box. Like I said, this is all new to me, so I was not sure what to expect. I was a little intimidated when I saw all the little pieces. Also in the box with the components was a set of instructions. Very basic, but at the top of this piece of paper was a link to a website for extra assistance if needed. Locate the small bag that contains all of your mounting screws. So let's jump right into this. Take your mounting bracket and let's attach that first. If you have the 14 watt laser and you're looking at other videos on installation, it tells you to remove the two lower screws on your router mount, but leave the top one. Yes, don't do that. Actually remove the two upper screws and leave the lower one. Now take your bracket and hook it in on the left side. There's nothing to screw in at this point. Then take your screw bag and take the two long screws from it and screw them into the two upper holes you just removed from your router's bracket. Don't completely tighten them just yet. Now you can go back to the opposite side and add the two smaller screws from your bag. Make sure your bracket is level on both sides, then tighten down all the screws. Okay, quick checkpoint. With the collar off of your router, check that the laser bottom is lower than your collar thread. Use any straight edge to do this. As you can see, I have a good half inch here. I could probably even get away with leaving my collar on. Now, find the two nuts that were in the small bag with your mounting screws. Locate the two nuts in the bag. These nuts will go on the back of the long screws on the right side of your bracket. Yes, this sounds easy. I have both a full set of metric and US standard wrenches. Not sure what size these nuts are, but I don't seem to have a wrench that fits. I found a small socket that fits perfectly. The only problem is the socket does not have room between the side of the nut and the side of the bracket. So save yourself some time and find yourself a small crescent wrench or just a good pair of pliers. It does not take that much to tighten these and I'm pretty sure you could do without them. Going back to your parts, they give you a small bag full of zip ties, double tape, and mounting hooks. I grab a zip tie and clean up the excess wires on the top of my laser. Just basic housekeeping. Now we are going to connect the ends of the laser to the long cable. This cable will connect your laser to the controller box. Start simply by joining your connectors together. These are actually two separate wires. So I joined them together with a small Velcro strip so it would be temporary in case I needed to make any changes. Next, you need to grab a small flathead screwdriver and start opening the links on your drag chain. Start by opening a few links and feeding your wire under the links and snapping back in place to help hold the wire in position as you continue on. To make this easy, move your router as far as you can to the left to expose as much of the drag chain as possible. Then, when you get to the last link that does not open, you unscrew your drag chain from the frame and feed the wires through the last link with the rest of the controller wires. Once complete, you can screw your drag chain back into place. For those of you who put together your CNC machines, this should be a walk in the park. Yes, you can probably do this without unscrewing it, but with as many wires as I have in mind, it made it much easier. Go back to your bag of zip ties and tie down the loose wires across the frame. I chose a few of the previous wires and just tied into those. They do provide mounting hooks with two-sided tape, but I don't think it looks as clean. Now that you have completed the first drag chain, the second one is no different. 
you will do all the same steps you just did before. When reattaching the drag chain, your small square nuts might move. Simply use your Allen wrench to align them with your chain and then screw in and reattach. In your zip tie bag, there are four two-sided tape squares. Place these on the bottom of your controller in the four corners. Now, everyone's component board is different, so you can mount wherever you want. You can also bypass the tape squares and screw your laser controller directly into the component board. I have opted to place mine on top of my X controller. Take the wires you just ran and plug them into your controller. Each plug will go into the left side socket when facing the back of your controller. Open the small package with the small white wire. One end has a black plug on it and the other end is left bare. This is the wire that will join your laser controller to the X controller. First, take the bare ends of your wire and prep them. You will need a bit of bare wire for the screw tap to bite into. Nothing fancy here, I'm not going to solder anything. I'm just going to take some wire strippers and strip a little more than a half inch. Then I take the wire and fold it back over onto itself. You should have about a quarter inch of bare wire when complete. Before you go playing around with electricity, double check that your X controller is unplugged. If you're missing your screw taps, you need to find them before you can continue. Okay, we are going to be attaching the red wire in the spindle power marked PWM and the ground in the ground marked GND. If you have a set of glasses screwdrivers, then this will be easy for you, but you will need a tiny flathead screwdriver to fit in the hole and turn the screw head. Slide the bare wire all the way in and then screw tight to give them a solid hold. That's all there is to it. Now I am ready to cut. I added the JTEX sticker and then took the remaining zip ties and cleaned up my component board to make everything look pretty. One nice addition to the kit was that JTEC provided me a clearance board. This is used to set the height of your laser over the material for a focused burn. There seemed to be a discrepancy between the documentation and the clearance board they provided though. I had installed Lightburn on my laptop the night before and played around with it, so to turn this on and immediately be able to start cutting was pretty impressive, even for a newbie do-it-yourselfer like me. My very first burn was a test board to see the different results with speed and power, and at the end of this video I will show you how I updated the laser with Air Assist. As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.